Sex can be one of the most intimate ways to connect with a partner, but what happens when it's used as a tool for control and manipulation? In this video, we're going to be exploring how sex can be weaponized in relationships and the devastating impact it can have on both partners. Understanding these behaviors is key to recognizing unhealthy dynamics and taking steps towards a healthier relationship. So what does it mean to weaponize sex? Well, this involves using intimacy as a form of power and control within a relationship. And yes, I know intimacy is not just to do with sex, but for the purpose of this video, sex as an intimate act, you're using that intimate act as a weapon. This is what I'm referring to. So this can manifest itself in various ways, such as withholding sex to punish or manipulate, using it as a bargaining tool, or engaging in intimacy with ulterior motives. When sex is weaponized, it undermines the foundations of trust, respect, and mutual desire that healthy relationships are built on. Imagine a situation where one partner refuses intimacy unless their partner meets certain demands or conditions. This actually creates a power imbalance and turns what should be an expression of love into a tool for control. And the partner on the receiving end of this manipulation often feels rejected, unimportant and guilty, leading to confusion and emotional distress. One of the most common ways sex is weaponized is through withholding as a form of punishment or control. And this isn't about needing space or time apart. It's a deliberate tactic. That's the key. It's deliberately used to make the other person feel inadequate or to manipulate them into changing their behavior. So when sex is withheld as a punishment, it can create deep feelings of insecurity, self-doubt in the partner who is being punished, and they may well start to believe that they're doing something wrong or that they're not desirable, which begins to erode their self-esteem. Over time, it's just gonna get worse and worse. The relationship becomes more about power dynamics than about actual mutual respect and affection creating a toxic environment where one partner is constantly trying to please the other to avoid being rejected because that rejection begins to get more and more painful all the time and has more and more kind of like facets added to it, like not feeling attractive, feeling undesired, um, having to jump through hoops, to work harder, try harder, all of this stuff. So, you know, it, it begins to kind of snowball. It just keeps adding extra stuff to it. Another way sex is weaponized is when it's used as a bargaining chip in the relationship. In this scenario, one partner offers sex in exchange for favors, gifts, or certain behaviors. This reduces intimacy to a very transactional act rather than an expression of love or desire or this kind of mutual connection. So using sex as a bargaining tool does have serious consequences for the emotional intimacy within a relationship. It sends the message that affection and closeness are conditional, something that has to be earned or bought over time. And this can create resentment and distance between partners as the one on the receiving end of this tactic may feel like their worth is being constantly measured and negotiated. For example, a partner may say, if you do this for me, then I'll make it worth your while later tonight. Um, or if you get me this, I'll make it worth your while tonight. And, and often on the surface, this seems really, really playful. It's a bit of a joke. Um, you know, it's something you can almost laugh off. Uh, so it seems quite harmless, but it subtly shifts the dynamic of the relationship, making love and affection something that is conditional rather than freely given. And sex can also be used to manipulate emotions such as using the intimacy to smooth over conflicts without addressing them uh, and addressing the underlying issues or to keep a partner emotionally invested despite other manipulative behaviors. Because often if sex is weaponized, there'll be other things that are going on which are quite manipulative too. This tactic uh, often leaves the other person feeling confused and emotionally manipulated. For instance, after a fight, a covert narcissist may well initiate sex as a way to avoid taking responsibility or having those difficult conversations. And while this does bring some temporary relief, it doesn't address the real issues in the relationship, which leads to a cycle of unresolved conflicts and emotional manipulation within the relationship. 
and the partner being manipulated may find themselves stuck in a pattern where sex becomes the go-to solution for every problem, whilst the deeper issues remain resolved and begin to build in power and eventually spill out into the relationship because they never get addressed. So, and then all of this conflict will start further down the line. The psychological impact of weaponizing sex can be quite profound. For the partner on the receiving end, it can lead to feelings of rejection, loss, self-worth, and a distorted sense of intimacy. Over time, this can contribute to anxiety, depression, and a deep sense of mistrust in relationships. I mean, I think I need to note here, I mean, if sex is weaponized, if anything is weaponized within a relationship, if your vulnerabilities become weaponized, whatever it might be, this is actually moving into the realms of abuse. Okay, so whilst this can go on and quite a surface level, subtle, it's a bit of a joke, blah, 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 blah. as time moves on, it, it just moves into being abusive. So when sex is used as a weapon, it strips away the mutual respect and the emotional connection that are essential for a healthy relationship, let alone the relationship you have with yourself inside. You know, the more I've seen women and men so broken from these kind of tactics, you know, feeling so ugly, so worthless, um, and, and so exhausted and stressed out through these, where sex particularly um, is weaponized um, and used as a manipulation. I mean, it, it's just beyond belief, you know, sometimes how much damage this can actually do. So the person being manipulated may well start to doubt their value, like I just said, and feel dis disconnected from their own desires and needs. And they may well begin to question whether they're truly loved for who they are or if they're just being used to fulfill their partner's needs and desires sometimes when sex is weaponized like in exchange for money and gifts and things like this this also becomes this kind of like self-harm cycle as well so um i'm going to be maybe a little bit controversial but usually it's women who are taken advantage of that way or take advantage of uh, someone else that way but over time it does it really does begin to erode self-esteem it moves into the area of self-harm to be quite honest um you give your body away in order to exchange something else and the more that happens the more the lower your self-esteem gets the, the harder it is to get out of and the same if it's the other way around if it's uh so you're always buying affection you know it's the same thing it's always it's never quite fulfilling enough it's always a little bit cold it's an exchange etc etc and if it's within the relationship i mean it really does have this kind of devastating effect and this kind of emotional manipulation can leave lasting scars literally uh, affecting not just the current relationship but also future ones the partner who has been manipulated may carry these feelings of inadequacy and mistrust into new relationships making it difficult for them to fully open up or feel secure with somebody new Recognizing when sex is being weaponized in a relationship is the first step towards addressing the issue. If you notice patterns of behavior where intimacy is used to manipulate or control, it's important to take action. Open communication is key. I mean, communication in relationships is key for any relationship to get to some kind of level of healthiness. But in this instance, start by discussing your concerns with your partner in a calm and non-confrontational way. Setting boundaries is also crucial. That helps build self-esteem, but make it clear that intimacy should be a mutual and consensual act, not something that is used as a tool for negotiation or punishment. If the issue persists, it might be helpful to seek professional help, such as couples therapy, where both partners can work through the underlying issues that are leading to these unhealthy dynamics because sometimes relationships spiral down into this kind of dynamic so it's kind of like it's no one's fault but it begins to become more of an exchange when it can be an indicator of something else going on underneath for one or either both parties within the relationship restoring intimacy as a mutual and consensual act of love rather than a tool for control is essential for a healthy relationship and this involves rebuilding trust, respecting each other's boundaries and ensuring that both partners feel valued and loved for who they are, not for what they can provide. A healthy sexual relationship is built on mutual respect, desire and emotional connection. I did do a video a little while ago about desire and love and that's, that's a whole other subject, but I'll pop the video up here. It's, a, it's an emotional connection. It's about two people coming together to share in each other's lives, not about one person using the other to fulfill their needs or exert control. 
But so by recognizing the signs of weaponized sex or anything else that's weaponized within a relationship and taking steps to address them, you can work towards creating a relationship that is based on genuine love, trust, and mutual respect. So weaponizing sex, it is a serious issue that can actually cause deep harm in relationships. By understanding the ways in which sex can be used as a tool for manipulation and control, you can take steps to protect yourself and work towards a healthier, more fulfilling relationship. If you found this video helpful, please like, comment, and subscribe. Share your own experiences or ask questions in the comments. I am here to help, and I do try to get around to everybody's comments. And until I see you next time, please take very good care of yourselves. Adios.